Summit Racing is first class with its catalog of performance parts, but did you know that they celebrate this fact once a year with a big event? Well, guess what? You're all invited to stop in and look around for the next half hour, courtesy of the Low Car Car Show, next. Hello again, everyone, and welcome. And I'm Griff Allen, and I'm pleased to be at Super Summit once again at the Summit County Fairgrounds, an event that used to take place at Summit Racing Equipment in Talmadge, Ohio. But Ted Jones, a little later on, is going to tell you why we relocated this year. So when we talk about all the cars we could possibly see, young and old and new and classic, the Opel GT sometimes comes up as a classic that was actually distributed in America through Buick dealerships. Interestingly enough, it came out on the scene about the same time as the Corvette, and it had some characteristics that were shared with that. For example, the fiberglass body, but nowhere near the power and performance. It was known as the poor man's Corvette. Maybe a little bit underpowered until now, but I found somebody who really took that to the next level. And Frank, what is in the hood there? Small block Chevy, about 900 horsepower. And uh, it runs on E85, ethanol fuel. So it's going green. But what kind of reaction do you get from other people? Oh, it's tremendous, uh, especially with the kids. They, they relate to the car because the car is small. They think it's a miniature Corvette. You drive this on the street. How comfortable is it? Actually, it's really comfortable. It doesn't look comfortable, but it is. It's, you know, the racing seats got padding in them, and of course, building the car around yourself, it, it just makes it a joy to drive. How many horses come out of that? About 900. About 900. That's a lot of power. And speaking of other ways to make power, here's Ted Jones with one. Okay, Griff, how about the latest in carburation from our friends at Holly in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is Jay McFarland. Boy, this is one monster dominator. How big is this? This is our new Gen 3 carburetor. We just released it. Uh, started shipping a couple of months ago, offered from 950 CFM to 1,475 CFM. Complete total new redesign this year for this. You know, the Dominator's been out since 1969. Yeah. We've done a few small changes to it, but this time we really went all out on everything that we did. Got a completely new air entry in the Venturi, so you get a nice smooth airflow in there. You have billet booster inserts with 12 holes in it, so you get nice emulsion with your fuel. Something cool that we did to it also, as you see here, it's got the four bolt holes on it. That's for the guys that's running a dragster or something that has a scoop. They don't have to use that messy adapter under the bottom and run the post up to bolt their scoop on. They can bolt it directly to the carburetor now. It has clear sight glasses on the fuel bowls. That way there's no mess trying to take a sight plug out to adjust. Some more cool things about the fuel bowl is it's our new HP fuel bowl. So it's a little bit larger than what our older V bowls were. So you've got 20% more fuel capacity. They have built-in baffles in them, so the fuel slosh isn't so bad. It kind of keeps that under control. You have drain plugs in the bottom of them, so you can drain the fuel out easily for quick, easy jet changes. As you can see on the side here, we have a throttle position sensor mount. So if you've got a guy wanting to do data acquisition and keep up with where his throttle is, you can just bolt a TPS on there and you can do that without having to have any kind of, you know, extra mounts or anything like that. Well, you guys thought of about everything when you did this, huh? Changeable jets, I assume. Changeable jets, changeable air bleeds, emulsion bleeds, and power valve channel restrictors. Now, this is the same thing, only in a different look over here. You know, everybody says black is the new chrome, so this is our hardcore gray version. It's actually a hard coat anodized is what we do to it. So you can get the Dominator in this, you can get it in the shiny with red, or you can also get it shiny with black parts on it. Well, there you go, folks. Believe me, a lot of people thought carburation was dead. No, Holly keeps right on the cutting edge. Ted, speaking of carburation, I came across one of the setups of carburetors that I think is more unique than anything that any of us have ever seen in quite some time. Take a look here at this 1934 street rod, is that we've got a double barrel carb here on both sides that channels down into a four barrel carb into the engine. So you gotta ask yourself, is it real or is it just for show? I mean, after all, take a look at the bling factor here. There actually is very, very lean jetting here in these upper stack of double barrel carbs that runs a lot of air, generating a lot of velocity to feed that big four barrel. So it, not only is the setup very interesting, it's also functional. Legend has it that this machine was previously owned by someone who owned a clock shop in Zanesville, Ohio, hence the name Father Time. 
Very nicely, cleanly appointed inside. And then of course, the classic throwback, the rumble seat. We're gonna have more charm and modern technology and innovation when the Low Car Car Show returns. This edition of the Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by Low Car Performance Products. Quality, plain and simple. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. And by Pure Flow Air Dog, home of the diesel fuel saver. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show, coming to you from Super Summit. Beautiful weather outside, but beautiful machinery inside. And boy, did I find something sick, literally sick. This is the legendary sick second Camaro. Take a look at that horsepower making machinery that we're gonna learn a little bit more about. When you look at something this extreme, what was the inspiration behind going this big? Uh, just seeing the other guys that were doing Drag Week. I mean, that's kind of, where everything came into and just seeing what they were doing and knowing that that was kind of pushing the limit of what a streetcar could do. You just said streetcar. Well, 2,000 miles a year get put on this car, 1,200 miles in one week in September when we race against all the other unlimited big guns. What does that give you aside from bragging rights? You can win a jacket. <laughs> It's a Steve Morris 615, a big block Chevy, twin 94 millimeter precision turbos. Lots of boost? On our best pass last year, we did a 694 with 20 pounds of boost. We can do upwards of 40 pounds of boost. It's just getting there. Engine itself is dynoed at 3,300 horsepower with 30 pounds of boost. We did a chassis dyno a week ago with the new Holly EFI system. 20 pounds of boost, 2,100 to the rear tires. All that power, you're not twisting the chassis apart, why? A Suncoast race car chassis, it's a double frame rail chassis, so it's built to handle the street driving, which makes the car kind of heavy for, it's a 3,000 pound car. These things are never done, what's next for it? I'm mainly just trying to get to where we think we can be, and then from there, obviously everything needs adjusted. So. It's even got power windows. That's what I've got here. Ted, what do you have? Well, Griff, I moved inside. You see a lot of displays inside here, huge displays. And I stopped by to meet with uh, Glenn Thompson from Stage 8. You know Stage 8, right? You have to have those for headers. It's a locking device. Show us how it works, Glenn. What we do is we put a groove in the head of the bolt. You put that bolt in and tighten it up just like you normally do. Once the bolt's tight, you put this locking retainer over the head of the bolt, positioning the tip up against the pipe in this case so it can't counter-rotate. Then once it's on, you put an E-clip in the groove, and that holds the retainer in place, and you lock the head in place. It cannot move. That's the main application, but you also have for like turbochargers. We do, yes. The turbocharger kits are selling real well now. What we do here in, the, in this case is all your stainless steel hardware here instead of aluminum because of the heat. And these things heat cycle so bad, they just need something. Same thing over here with the collector. That's correct, yeah, that's for the collector kit for the downpipe of the headers. Okay, for you four by four guys. This is what we call our X-Lock. This one is pretty unique here. I'll show you how this works. We start off with what we call our notched washer. This is where all your strength is. That guy's not going anywhere. There's 23 notches around here. That'll come into play in a second. That goes on first. We're gonna be using a single nut system now. And that goes on next. And one of the other features of this product is wherever I stop this nut, I can lock it in place without having to change my preload. The way we do that is we have 23 notches here. This is what we call our lock and retainer. 23 notches, seven tangs. Seven and 23 are both prime numbers if you paid attention in math class. When you combine prime numbers, magic happens, and we can see that here. What we do, this goes on next over the nut, and it obviously is not keyed in correctly here, but the magic of the prime numbers is if I spin this thing and try all eight positions, I'm gonna find one where it'll fit right on there without having to move that nut, and there it goes. That locks the two together. We have a snap ring now, it goes over the nut to hold the retainer in place. We put two grooves in there so you can put the nut on either way, not have to worry about it. Something else we do, we know you're gonna need snap ring pliers. We also know you're gonna need to fit this thing. So what we do is we put a couple of holes in the retainer here. That allows you to get in that hub and do the fitting. This thing will hold over 650 foot pounds. Stage A, you got a website www.stage8.com, S-T-A-G-E, the number 8.com. I've got something interesting here too, which is not a misprint. BMW, Bavarian Motorworks, legendary road cars, European made, 
Here we got a GMW. Why is it called that? When you open up the European hood here, you see an LS3. Jesse and Jamie are the ones behind the madness. First of all, what inspired taking a European car and Americanizing it with the horsepower? Well, it's the amount of horsepower you can get out of an American motor and how reliable that horsepower is. So these LS3 engines are readily available, easy to put in the car, and easy to maintenance. And BMWs are known as great road racing cars. Have you lost any of that with this power? No, I think if anything, we've gained it with the addition of the wide body kit and the suspension upgrade. So, you know, switching everything from the standard stock four lug suspension up to the upgraded BMW M brakes, calipers, suspension, Eibach and uh, Kony adjustable suspension. We've gained a lot of performance on this car. We went from a small stock 325 brake system from an E30 generation to a newer E36 M3 upgraded disc and caliper front and rear so the balance stays you know pretty much the same as BMW intended to on a super light car. We're planning an additional upgrade you know with a Willwood big brake kit on the front so we'll gain even more stopper performance on that so the handling should be uh, superb. The balance between the form and the function, how does that strike you when it came to designing this? Well, we really wanted to maintain that BMW flair, but give it that high horsepower, very reliable GM motor and control. So we like the BMW look, it just needed a little bit of updating to make it look fast, not just good. What kind of reaction does this car get from people? People cannot believe when they pop the hood what's in there. Everybody expects it just to look good on the outside, and then they realize this is actually a race car. So making lots of horsepower. Race-wise, performance-wise, give me some numbers. On the handling side, I would expect to outperform even the newer style, you know, M3s, M5s. What's next for it? To put it on the chassis dyno, fully custom tune it, take it to the standing mile with the goal of crushing 200 mile an hour. Okay, we certainly will be looking for that, and we will be looking for what's next on the Low Car Car Show when we return right after this. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show. Coming to you from Super Summit, where you find great combinations of form and function and history and modern technology. So a couple of slices out of time here, the LS1 engine, as well as a 62 Chevy Impala SS. You know, my freshman year in high school, I uh, had an English teacher. She could die for the curve that she had, and I figured she, I'd put her with a 62, she just drive with the 62 Chevy. I always say when I get to be a grown guy, you know, I would go ahead and marry her and get me a 62, but <laughs> I think I made a good choice thinking with the car now. When I first got the car, I was up in Norwalk at the racetrack, and this guy goes, man, uh, would you like to buy a car? We got a 62 Chevy. So we went down to the house, and they were way back in the alley somewhere in a big, huge bun he had, and his car was sitting there. So he goes, are you going to buy this car? I go, no, I don't like it. I'll, I'll give you a call back. So I called him back, I shot a price at him. I said, you take it or leave it? So the guy said, well, how long does it take you to get up here? I said, four hours. Got the trailer and came back and got it. I said, well, I guess I better get out of here before he realized he sold an SS Super Sport match number car. <laughs> you made a little modifications with the center console. You know, they had a real short console and it really didn't make the car look nice. So I extended from the front to the back. And I also had the trackage tray made in the back here. So I'm gonna give the design down to the kick panel. So I wanna keep everything on the original. Because when you take away from a 62, you know, just like taking candy from a baby. We didn't want to overkill it. You know, there's something nice and basic to keep it just for the 62. If you come here and you look closely, you can see the purling that is done so flawlessly all across the length to replace that red stripe that came out of the factory. Now, Ted Jones is here. He's in the building. Can't find him. I'm going to go look for him. But if you look over my shoulder, you'll see a Mustang that has caught my eye. I'm going to go learn about that while you catch up with Ted Jones. Well, still inside, Griff, I want to show you something. Your know, turbos are in, right? Turbos have a problem. They make a lot of heat. This man has the answer with a turbo blanket. Yes, sir. We're here to keep you cool with our HP Turbo Shield. Uh, it comes in silver, black, and also a lava color like this. And a heat can be your enemy a lot of times, so you have wrap for about everything. Yes, all kinds of wrap, all kinds of colors of wrap, inferno wrap. That's the kind of wrap you use if your existing exhaust wrap gets too hot, gets brittle, comes apart, use something like that. Or our heat shield armor, it's like an exhaust blanket, can be cleaned after it goes on the pipe. Yeah, this looks like it's insulated. It's probably really effective. Really effective. It knocks a lot more heat down than off of like a standard wrap. 
Uh, with this, you don't have to double wrap, single wrap, locks it up, you're good to go. These are like little stainless zip ties? Yes, sir, they're a stainless steel locking tie. We have them in the thin version and a thicker, wider version like this, a pair of needle nose pliers and a pair of diagonal cutters, and you can lock it into place, you're good to go. You overlap it just a little bit. Quarter inch overlap when you're going around the pipe, exactly. Okay, now what is this guy? This is our Thermoflex sleeve. A lot of people already know that you gotta keep your wires cool. Fuel line cool, helps with vapor lock and that kind of thing. Yeah, it would. A nice little trick to this is you can use it on an intercooler pipe to knock your uh, intake temperatures down even more, get a little more power out of the motor. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. Okay, so if you got a turbo, you've got an intercooler. And here's a sample of other uses here. Yes, sir, these are all of like our heat shield barriers. These are thicker, heavier duty ones, well suited for firewall or transmission tunnel with limited airflow. Some of the lighter, thinner ones, those were great with airspace and good airflow. They can reflect up to over 90% of radiant heat. And I assume this is available from Summit? Yes, it is. You can get everything that's available at Summit. Or they can go to your website. Or to our website, heatshieldproducts.com. Okay, folks, back to you, Griff. Just as I promised you, the Mustang, but not any Mustang, the Boss. But which one? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out because Rick and Lisa Johnson from Salt Lake City have really brought a showstopper here. When you look at the power plant, you gotta realize that is a Windsor, which never was a Boss motor. It started out as a 351 Windsor that was stroked to a 427 and supercharged. Couple that up with a six-speed Tremec, and then you got all kinds of fun as far as the horsepower and the driveline goes. But the thing that really caught my eye is that you can see that the headlight wells were reflected and mirrored, actually, to the inside to the center line of the front of this machine. And you can also see that this bar here, which not only has a great look to it, almost reminiscent of the Chevron that you might find on maybe a Corvair, it actually maybe does a functional duty of replacing where the radiator brace used to be. Beautiful shaker hood, beautiful paint job, nice chrome accents, and a lot of people notice the exhaust here, very impressive. To the interior you move and you find the gauge pods, reminiscent of an older time, as is that flaming river steering column. And the rear seat, gone and replaced with another artistic creation that really makes for a great accent to the back end of the machine. So when you move to the back here, you can see more great metalwork. You can see where the rear has been extended beyond what used to be the factory tail of the car. And you can even see more bodywork done to recess the bumper into the body. So lots of cutting, lots of pasting, lots of beauty, lots of care. And when you find well-appointed cars like this at Super Summit, it really makes the whole day worthwhile. We will have more worthwhile cars and other great things when the Low Car Car Show returns. This edition of the Low Car Car Show is being brought to you by Low Car Performance Products. Quality, plain and simple. b &M, quality performance products that work. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by VR12, ultimate cooling system protection. Welcome back to the Low Car Car Show, coming to you from Super Summit. You know, when you think back to the muscle car wars of the 60s, you think of the fact that all three manufacturers were really trying to outdo themselves and playing games with the numbers in terms of horsepower rating, when they were really trying to stuff as much power as they could in sedans that were full-bodied family cars. And here, this Belvedere is a beautiful example of that, that is in great condition, just as it came off the factory floor when you look on the inside. You can see the bench seats. You can see the 727 three-speed transmission. You can see everything in original condition, including the factory delete option, which sort of gives you an inkling that this person was all about performance. Well, of course, there was the wedge head, but it wasn't until the hemispherical head came out and the 426 Hemi was born that it really changed the face of racing in NASCAR with Richard Petty. Then there was Sox and Martin that took this in a straight line to legend. And then from there, all of your top Draxers have imitated that engineering, the hemispherical head. Now, when you look back at this car, you not only appreciate the significance it had in teaching us to go fast, but also just the look of the time, the knockoff hubcaps, Nader hated those. Of course, very dangerous, very dangerous, must get rid of those. But if you really appreciate this car, you see the condition that it's in, give some thought to what this car might do if you took it to a collector auction. The thinking is that you very well could put your kids through college with this. That's a little bit about this beauty. Now let's check out this week's low car lowdown.
On this week's Low Car Lowdown, Jeff, we're talking about the folks who are going back to a little more traditional styling when they're building their hot rods. And as always, Low Car gives folks a choice. You know, we've seen so many guys want to go back to the traditional cars of the 40s and 50s. And our Lakester series, throttle pedals, window cranks, that'll get them there. I like the raw. Yeah, that gives uh, the guys a lot of options as far as customability. They can paint it, they can powder coat it. We also do them in chrome for just that classic look and we have them available in our Midnight Series as well. You want to come and check them out and see how they're made? You can even do that right there in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, everybody's welcome to come by in Knoxville, see this stuff made. It's quality, support the good old USA, and buy American. And no matter which color that you would choose, all lifetime warranty. If you want to find out more, all you have to do is go to lowcar.com and hey, you know what? They're celebrating their 25th anniversary. You can also find them on Facebook. I came across a beautiful 1966 Chevy Deuce. It's got a 327 to sedate engine in there, and of course horsepower ratings back in the day couldn't exceed the cubic inch rating of the engine. So for example, a moment ago we looked at that Belvedere with the 426, factory D-rated to 425, but off the showroom floor, about 500 horsepower. Grip, but, grip, but, grip, but, grip, but, grip, this is an unusual 327. These things were rare, folks. This is the 350 horsepower that broke the rules. You were right. You couldn't have more horsepower than cubic inches if you wanted to get it insured. So Chevrolet came out and said 350 horsepower, and that was a little low probably. In a Chevy Deuce, are you kidding me? But here's the rare thing about this, okay? It's all original matching numbers. This car is worth a lot of money. I mean, I noticed the tower clamps. I noticed the original Delco battery. We also noticed they tried to stop all this speed and power with the simple little single, not even power brake master cylinder, huh? A lot of great old technology that we've seen all day long here, and I'm grateful to have you along to point it out. Okay, thank you very much, Grip Boy. This has been a great show. Super Summit is really trick. And next week, we have got coming up. Oh, trucks. Trucks next week from here at Super Summit on the Low Car Car Show. And finally, the Low Car Pick of the Week. This awesome automobile will be in competition for the Pick of the Year at the end of the season. A special December episode of the Low Car Car Show.